This is the first week of the winter trimester of 2018. First week of school after the long winter break. Um, really happy to be back in the studio and working on stuff again. Monday, we started off getting the um, matte pose, the model, and she was in the standing pose, but she kept getting getting dizzy. So he switched the pose up to a seated pose. And I really like the seated pose a lot. We do a lot of standing figures. So the seated pose is something that's different for me. Uh, yeah, I'm excited that, well, it's bad that she was feeling not well and dizzy, but um, I like the seated pose a lot. So anyways, um, so on Monday then, I did a small pencil drawing and just to get familiar with the pose. On Tuesday, I start my big charcoal drawing. I'm using Vine Charcoal, not sure what the brand is, and Canson paper, and I have two pieces of Canson paper taped together so I can make it bigger. But um, so I'm doing this and I'm, I'm working out the, the big shapes of it. And Magda comes by for her cheek halfway into the session, so about an hour and a half in. And she looks at mine and she just says, um, I think it would look a lot better if it was bigger. So I said, okay. So I took my chamois and I erased everything because it's just like the basic outlines in it, anyways. And, um, Made it bigger so I pushed my easel up a little bit closer to the model so there's still nice light hitting my easel and then I stepped as far back as I could so it in that with working side size that gets the model um, bigger on my paper so I just started again and had another about an hour and a half to work on it so it's this is the finished one I don't think you could see I use the same paper but I don't think you can really see the um, the smaller version on it Wednesday then, I get the general pose in and um, Magda calls us all over and she talks about um, when you're getting a block in to the importance of, um, or it's more helpful to be using charcoal that are like soft, thicker, maybe blurry lines. So you're kind of just getting um, the basic outline of the figure and not to be using really sharp, thin, dark lines yet. So she's saying like the, the more the thicker the line that you're putting down, just the more um, the more fluid that it can be so you can still be changing things up a lot. Especially since the first week, I have definitely found that the first week is when the model is really getting comfortable with the pose and so they'll be kind of changing their weight a little bit until they find something that they rest and lock into, which I definitely noticed that this is happening in this pose. Um, my little pencil drawing, the model, she's leaned over quite a bit, so the, um, like her, her hip and side of her stomach or her side is pretty big and then it just gets smaller and smaller as it goes up because she's really leaning into the podium. And though towards the end of the week she has straightened up a little bit and she's staying pretty consistently. still has a really nice gesture and lean to it, but not as extreme as it was that first day. Thursday then, I just work on making things more specific, horror-specific proportions, and working on a the specific light shape and shadow shape, and then that edge of the shadow shape that divides the two. And then on Friday, I'm doing the same thing with trying to get things more specific, because this is my last day that I'll be working on the transfer drawing, and so I want to make sure that everything that I'm putting down is going to be really clear and helpful for when I transfer it to my painting. Um, and then for doing this, I find that I use my, I use my hands a lot and my fingers to, to blend things to get like in the, in the shadow shape to get a nice unified tone, but I'm still trying to then like for the shadow edge, make sure that that's specific. So I probably won't usually blur with my fingers too much on the shadow edge. Um, and I use a, a fan brush a little bit, a chamois, a kneaded eraser to, I use the kneaded eraser, which I really like to, um, work on that shadow edge because then I'm, it feels more like painting then, so, cause I can put charcoal down, but then take it up with the eraser to make the edge more specific, the shadow edge. Um, yeah, I feel like with painting now, I feel like how I draw with charcoal is different. Um, one of my friends, Michael, who's standing beside me in this pose, he's 
has kind of been commenting that that my my transfer drawings look different or the way I begin drawings ever since I started painting and I think that is true it kind of feel like with painting I maybe I'm kind of getting a sense of um, what's necessary and what's unnecessary and just to um, you just want to like get things down fast so you know how to so I know how to like play around with the the big masses of light and shadow but uh, I'm pretty happy with how this transfer drawing turned out so I I can't wait to paint this on Monday the model also which you can't tell from a black and white charcoal drawing she has blue hair which I think is gonna be really fun to paint and she also has this blue robe which I think it's gonna still be this this blue robe maybe not but I think it'll be pretty fun to paint okay and then so for the model session is in the morning and then in the afternoon session it's the individual students individual project so what I'm working on is still life painting right now and so I over the summer was setting up something which is this which it was a, a scale with a gold bowl on it and books to the side and uh, there's a rug behind it so a lot of different textures that I could play around with and really excited about it um, I, I talked about this in a video and someone commented saying that we're well, talking about in the video how I'm trying to like push a narrative element and the, someone commented and said that was giving me ideas that maybe I could push it push the narrative element more and so I started playing around with seeing if I can do that where I can push the narrative element more and I come up came up with this idea that I'm really excited about and it's King Midas's golden touch so I was thinking about then if King Midas is um, changing things into gold and uh, so he changed this bowl into gold and he's recording um, you know how much the bowl weighs down gold and you know like his recording his new found wealth and uh, so I did some research on that mythology and there's three different iterations of it and in two of them he has these gloves that he wears that have been turned into gold because they touched his hands but they um they protect things so he can if he's wearing the gloves he can be touching other things and not turning it into gold when he doesn't want to be so in this scene in this um in his treasury he's turning more things to gold so he takes off a gold glove and puts it on the table so he's going to go and turn more things and um so i want to practice or i want to see about making a glove gold and um also having objects in the background that would be more in the shadows and so at the end of the king midas story uh i think it's apollo that gives him donkey ears so i wanted to have this little wooden toy donkey that he would have turned into gold as it foreshadowing his future down the road um so i told matt about this and um he is saying that that could be a good idea or maybe not because the painting might then become too cluttered so i'm gonna try it and get some objects made up so the gloves and the the donkey but I might end up not doing it I might end up just doing the original version where it's just the scale and the books and such and maybe um, maybe if there is a King Midas theme maybe not I guess all those objects are it wouldn't be a a cluttered painting so I don't know so um, anyways I ordered some stuff offline the donkey and the gloves they, they were taking longer than expected for them to arrive so I'm doing this still life right now so I asked Matt what I should do I wanted to do something really quick and he said why don't you try and get this done in two weeks he said it'd be good for me to learn how to paint glass so I had this glass bottle and then he set up behind it or beside it or in it <laughs> he put this um this hammered metal bowl and then these dried up rose petals which are a bunch of different textures as well that I can start playing around with painting Okay, so then, so on Monday, we, I got that set up, and then I did a color study of it, and that's, this, 
what you're seeing right now is how I ended the color study, but then Matt came in at the end of the day and was saying that I could be pushing the color more, and so he showed me an example of, of doing that on it, and I forgot to take a picture of it. So the colors are more intense at the end of it than what you're seeing now. Um, on Tuesday, I started the, the painting that, I think this painting, it's 11 by 14 size, and I had a tone on it, and I started to use charcoal directly on the painting, and I just really had the gist of it down drawing-wise, so I had this outline of a bottle and the bowl, and Magda came by for my critique and said that I, since it's a, it's a pretty simple setup to just start dry brushing with paint, and so she left and I did that so I mixed up a shadow color and I without any medium just a dry brush I started brushing in the big shadow shape and light shape of the whole composition and I feel like that saved me so much time because I think if she wouldn't have come by I would have gotten everything I would have done that with charcoal but doing it dry brushing with paint it's a lot easier for me. It feels more natural for me to do. It's a whole lot faster and I feel like it's easier because I, I'll dry brush with a paintbrush onto the canvas, you know, to put the paint down to get the shadow shapes down, but then if I want to move the shadow edge over or make light shape bigger, I just take a paper towel and then I can um, just brush the, the paint off. So it's, it just feels really fluid and really easy to move around but also permanent because the paint's going to stay on the canvas unlike the charcoal which you can just brush off easily. So um, yeah I got that down really fast and then so I started to do I wanted to bring the painting further along so that same day I with the shadow color I added just a tiny bit of turpentine on the end of my brush and mixed it in with my shadow color and that was getting the paint on a lot darker which was good and then I just started just like using a tiny bit of turpentine um, just trying to get the painting closer to nature so um, making the bold more making the bowl more of that brassy color and uh, the wood and the rose petals and all of that stuff <laughs> and it was nice because since the layer where I was just dry brushing paint on um, was still wet since it was the same day when I started using the turpentine as well I feel like I could still be using the paper towel to move the paint around if I needed to make a light shape bigger or to change the the, the shadow edge around and make it more specific and it just had a really nice effect with having an edge that is dry brushed and then also where I need it to be something that's more crisp having the, the paint that has a teeny bit of turpentine in it because that kind of gives it um, a more inky feeling to it. So this is the first time that I've done that and it just went super fast and really well. So i um, glad I figured that out. Okay, so then after that, every day that I'm working on this, I'm just trying to get it closer to nature drawing wise and then value wise and then color wise is kind of how I'm, I'm trying to do it all at the same time. <laughs> But I'm putting most importance into drawing, and then once that starts to feel solid, then the most important thing is the value. Once the value starts to feel solid, then the most important thing is the color. Then, And Matt is telling me to work on the base. And by working on the base, that means not just working on the wood plank, but everything that's resting on it and how it's resting on it. And to make sure that things don't look like they're floating, but they have weight, and it's the... The shadow line of the op so like the rose petals those shadow lines that are on the base because for some reason I I never really so I don't pay attention to it but it's just not um, I'm just not excited about doing it I guess working on the base and having things look like they're resting on the base which is important for a painting because I think if everything's kind of floating around it doesn't have gravity your paint's probably going to look maybe a little stupid <laughs> so that's something that I probably need to it's something that I need to um put more in the forefront of my mind and um I think it's something that I'm probably going to be a little uh panicked about now especially when I'm out of school and I don't have Matt and Mock to say I'm like well it doesn't really look like anything sitting on 
anything convincingly, so that's going to be something that I focus on. Okay, oh, and something else cool that Magda was telling me that um, while I'm working the early stages of this painting, that it would be good if I can make it look like there's different materials in this painting. So make the glass look like glass, make the brass bowl look like a hammered brass bowl really early on in the painting and not save that, like messing around with the texture of things later on. And this painting is going really fast for me, even though I, I haven't been feeling really well this week. So I, the afternoon sessions at three hours and I feel like not every day I'm, I'm staying for three hours. So, um, just been really tired and not feeling well. So even though with me not putting in as much time as I normally would, uh, it's still going really, really fast, which is nice because the last painting I did of this one, the, the red pot and the garlics, that took a really long time. I think six or seven weeks for me to do, but I was, I was new to still life and using color in that way and kind of experimenting with different ways to apply paint. So it's nice feeling that um, this one's going a lot, a lot faster. And then someone emailed me a question about charcoal drawing and um, they're talking about um, they're frustrated with charcoal drawings because I think they're unhappy with how their drawings are turning out because they said they understand that you should be blending as little as possible because it will look dirty, but they're having trouble getting the charcoal smooth without blending. They said the paper is shining through a lot and they're using H sticks, so the hard blue sticks that are the natrium ones. And um, I was just talking earlier in this video with how I've been doing my charcoal drawings and it's kind of like I am pretty aggressively blending with my fingers or a fan brush um, or a chamois or the kneaded eraser. But those are, when I do that, it's for drawings that I'm going to be using a transfer drawing for the painting and the painting is the finished product, not the drawing. If I, if the drawing is going to be the finished product, then I'll be a lot more careful. I probably won't use my fingers because the oils from your fingers can um, get your paper to look oily and then the, the, it'll um, smudge weird. And um, so, but even when I am doing a drawing, I will use a fan brush really, really lightly and it's when I'm making lines to put the charcoal down, the fan brush is kind of just knocking the lines down a little bit, so each individual line isn't so noticeable. Um, but the main thing is with the charcoal that I found to get something to look smooth and a consistent tone is not relying on blending the charcoal, but making sure that your charcoal is really, really, really sharp and my favorite ways to sharpen my charcoal shape-wise is either making it into look like a blade, so like a knife, or like a needle, like a really, really fine needle point. And so then if you're just being careful with how you're putting your lines down so the paper's not showing through because it's so sharp that you, you have control that you can make your lines really fine and close together, the paper shouldn't show through and it should be a more consistent tone. And I think another thing with um, blending, while blend, when blending looks bad, because I, I think blending, you can either blend and it can look great or it can look bad. And if it's blending, is looking like, like you're blurring something or like you're smudging the charcoal. And I think that looks bad. <laughs> and I think it looks better when you, you have more control with blending because you're trying to make specific shapes, specific shapes of tone. Okay, I have my Pericles drawing at home. Let's see if I can get it close enough to the video. Let's see what this looks like. Ugh. So, oh, there's kind of a glare. You can see the camera phone in the glare. But, okay, so if I am drawing down here and the light travels down um, the chest of Pericles, um, it's not like a smooth, like your... Um, blurring things randomly just to get it to look like it's smoothly going down but there's a lot of different shapes of tone and that worrying about like different shapes of tone in a bigger area I feel like is what helps me to like it has shapes of tone without um being 
smudgy. So like you can see here, this there's like a little square and that is a pretty even lighter tone. And then when you come down here, there's almost like another um, triangle-y shape here where the tone, this tone is darker than this square-like shape. And then even coming down further to this like rectangle thing, it's a little bit darker. So just making sure that you're getting the tone to look like specific shapes of tone rather than kind of, um, I don't know, randomly blurring. Okay, and then also they were talking about paper. They say they use Neutrum on the Canson paper. I like to use Canson paper. I like to use the, the rough side of Canson paper, though some people um, like to use the, the really smooth side, so I think that's more so your preference for it. Though I use the Canson paper when I'm doing a drawing that is going to have lighter values on it. So for like my transfer drawings, that's on Canson paper. And then I use Roma and Firenze when I want really deep, dark values. So like with the Pericles drawing that I just showed, it has really black values in the background. And um, that paper is good for that because it's so, it's got so much tooth to it that the charcoal can really sit in the paper. It's not going to it's not going to fall out of the paper like it does more so with the Canson. So Canson, if I'm doing lighter values, the Roma or Firenze paper if I want really dark values.